The Denver City Council approved a safe injection site pilot program this week with a 12 to 1 vote. The state legislature must approve the plan for it to go into effect next year. Patty, we've heard about this plan possibly coming up. This is the first time we finally see the vote. What do you think about the odds of it being approved officially at the state legislature this year? Well, it came close, or at least was discussed in the legislature last time, and now we've got both houses are Democratic. So it's very possible that it will be approved. When you come down, especially through downtown to this part of town, you realize just something has to be done on so many levels with people experiencing homelessness, many of whom have mental health problems or addiction issues. At this point, just chopping away at every single aspect that you can and trying something I think makes sense. Here we you had 12 out of the council members vote for it. The only example we really have is Vancouver and their mixed reviews coming from that. But I think in Denver, we have to do something and I think it's a start. If it doesn't work, we can always backtrack. Ross, we've seen the growing problem of the opioid, opioid crisis in Colorado. I mean, I think there was a piece uh, this week. It wasn't about the crisis so much, but it was about just uh, the sanitation in Denver. They think it was the, the Nine News was going around and seeing the, the filters they're using around some of the uh, uh, different gutters in Denver. And it's almost like they pull it out and you see evidence of it. I mean, we guess what you call like illegal sewage of all the different needles and things sticking out of what would usually consider just trash in Colorado. Is this going to be an answer to that problem that we're seeing throughout Denver? Well, first of all, well done with the illegal sewage. Uh, second of all, <laughs> you know, we, we've seen a lot in the news uh, about San Francisco and what's happened there with the homelessness and the drug use and the, all the stuff on the sidewalks and the noodle, uh, the needles, uh, noodles and all that. And we don't want to become that. It, it's interesting with my audience, mostly right of center talk radio audience, um, more against it than for it, but a lot of them sort of grudgingly saying, we got a problem. We need to think about something here. W one thing that I think my listeners appreciate about at least the the ordinance from Denver uh, during the pilot phase, at least, is that it's privately funded. And I think among the more conservative people, which not necessarily majority of Denver, but in my audience at least, uh, I, I think that helps them a little bit. The idea that it's it's private people rather than government just giving money to drug addicts as they might see it if it were a government program. I'm in favor of it uh, and 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 I also like the idea that they're going to they'll do it as a pilot. I hope the legislature allows it. Eric, is Denver going on on a political limb here with this program? Oh, a bit, but it's certainly not the first time and per the previous lightning round question, as the state turns more blue, more liberal, the the limb is a much more solid limb, uh, shall we say. Uh, Kevin Flynn, former uh, companion of ours around this table, was the lone no vote on Denver City Council. I thought some of Kevin's comments were interesting and thoughtful, as well as Krista Kafer had a column in this morning's Denver Post, also someone who joins us uh, around this panel. This strikes me as the classic case of an issue that uh, has in conflict two very closely held and important values. On the one hand, you have public health and compassion and everything else, safety that goes along with that. On the other hand, you have, is, is, is this smart and do we, do we in a way incentivize this or do we give it license and do as we have seen with uh, somewhat of our emphasis on homeless programs, uh, do we just create more of a problem and become a magnet? Uh, I think those are important issues to debate. I would anticipate it probably goes through the legislature. You have a Democratic Senate that died in a Republican Senate committee last year. Uh, I think we will see this pilot program. I'm interested. It will be the first of its kind, government sanctioned in the United States. I'm interested to see how it works, but I remain slightly skeptical, only slightly so. Susan, did, Denver, did the Denver City Council make the right call? I, I think so. I mean, I, I think um, the alternative is doing what the feds seem to suggest to do, which is nothing. I mean, there is some scientific ambiguity about whether this decreases um, use or whether these are really effective, but there's absolutely no data to say that it increases use, and there is data to say that people who have attended these clinics and used these services, which by the way also include substance abuse counseling, 
for those who want it, and also a space that's not shaming, um, a safe space, and in many ways the only safe space some of these users will occupy in their day. Um, and so there's no evidence that um, you know nobody has died in any of these clinics around the world, and many countries do have them aside from Canada. Um, the critics of these uh, programs remind me of the critics in the 80s and 90s of condoms, um, as if the uh, n n no sex was a viable option to safe sex. Um, and by opposing these clinics, you're not going to do anything at all about the opioid crisis. I agree with Patty, which is you have to attack it on many, many levels, and this is one small way to attack it.